Hi everyone and welcome back. I've been gone here for a pretty long while and uh, I felt that I needed to explain myself here a little bit since some of you are asking why I'm not posting here on the English channel. For those of you that know, I have both an English channel, this one, and I have a Swedish channel since I live in Sweden. And uh, my dream has always been to work on the English channel because I love the English language. I love to reach out to other countries. So, I mean, Sweden is a pretty small country. So I really like the spread and to talk with people from other nations. And as I said, that, that has always been my dream to have the English channel working. But uh, just as a test, I started the Swedish channel and the Swedish channel has had a very steady growth during the two, like two years I've had it, while the English channel is really, really struggling. I know that there are like two or 300 people that turn into every video. And uh, I really appreciate all of you that do that, but when I post an English video and it gets two to 300 views and I post a Swedish video and I get 5,000 views within the first 24 hours, you probably understand why the Swedish channel for now makes the most sense. But I promise you the English channel is where my dream lies. I never thought about making the Swedish channel. I just tried it and uh, it worked out. But I really like the English and reaching out to more people. But uh, since I'm making this video, because when I woke up this morning, I had a message from Carrie, we, and we had watched my English videos and went over to the Swedish channel just to ask what's happening. So I just felt that I had to explain a little bit here and show you what's going on. And if you want to see more of my videos in English, Please feel free to tell me that in the comments to inspire me to make the English videos because I really, really enjoy doing them. I love speaking English. I love the English language. I think it's a lot better than the Swedish language. I often describe things when I'm talking Swedish and I just found the, find the English words because I think the English words describes what I want to say a lot more than the Swedish words. Does. So I really liked English language. So yeah, thanks to Carrie for uh, making that post and making to me making this video today and do you want to see more please tell me in the comments because i really want to make more it's just that the swedish channel makes more sense at the moment so where are we right now what have happened since uh, you saw this last i actually didn't go in and check what my last video was on the english channel but i thought we can just make a um, check around here on my property so here we have the Chevelle that I have been working on since uh, like um, January this year. And I can't really remember what the last thing I did was, but now this thing is 100% street legal. It's inspected, it's insured, it is totally drivable. You can take it out of here, drive it on the streets and uh, the cops can't do a thing. So I have fixed everything, I put on all the body parts, did all the electrical system, all the lights. As I can't really remember what you saw last, but I started doing body work. So I tried to fix this rear quarter and painted it to see how good it would look, how much effort I want to put into the body work. And it is decent this quarter. It needs some small adjustments, but it's overall pretty nice. So the plan is the whole car is going to get this black paint. And for those of you that don't remember, this is a four door that has been converted to a two door. And that was before I bought the body. And then I have done a lot of work to make the two door conversion a lot nicer. So it's coming along really, really nice. It's basically, I mean, it's already a fully drivable car. I have enjoyed it a bit, but it needs some more work here. This quarter is 90% done, it needs uh, some more sanding. This side is a lot better than the driver's side, uh, or at least the door is, because the door on uh, the driver's side was really smashed and it was rusty like everywhere. So I just bundled the whole thing because I think that this door should be replaced, but I don't have a door. So, I mean, 
I'm going to sell this thing, but I'm going to clarify that the door isn't really great. Also, the trunk lid is uh, pretty bad, so I just put some uh, fiberglass uh, bondo on it. So, yeah. If the next owner can't live with knowing that it's rust beneath paint, they can change the deck lid and uh, the, uh, the door and then they will have a fully nice rust-free car. So yeah, that's basically where we're at at the moment. The last thing I did was I put in some seat belts and some small stuff so that I would feel comfortable driving it, but it looks like a project. But uh, I could take this out and pick my boys up from school. It, it's a 100% driving uh, vehicle right now. So that's the status on the 64 Chevelle. If you remember, I had a 67 Chevelle and I have sold it or more like traded it. I traded it and I got a pretty large amount of money in between. So I really didn't want to sell it but I felt to keep working with projects I need to sell stuff buy new stuff and uh, yeah you have to change stuff out so I traded the Chevelle for this 71 El Camino and uh, if you're really really yeah, old on my channel you will recognize this because I have already owned it once I sold it to a guy and he uh, uh, done some stuff to it and now I traded it back with him I didn't really want it, but I needed the money that I got in between, so it worked out. I kept the wheels from my Chevelle, so I put them on here. So when I sold this thing, it had a 6.5 turbo diesel in it and no transmission. And I think the motor was bad or something, I don't really know, but I sold the... No, I didn't sell. The previous owner sold the engine, put in a 307 with a turbo 350 transmission. So it has a drivetrain in it but it isn't connected in any way. It's basically just hanging in there. So it needs a lot of work to become a driver, but uh, it's a pretty decent truck. The worst thing on this thing is that it has a lot of rust here in the frame. So that has to be addressed. But uh, he uh, dropped off the doors to someone that uh, uh, repaired the rust in the doors. And as I said, he put in this uh, drivetrain and yeah, that's basically it. But uh, my plan right now, right now is I'm going to I'm going to uh, make this run and drive and uh, I'm going to keep it uh, is the plan for now. We'll see, but uh, that is at least what I'm planning on doing. Uh, besides that, I have this El Camino. I don't think I showed you that. I bought this thing for a thousand bucks. It was b partly taken apart and it was it was blue you can see this smurf blue color partly and partly sanded down and it's been sitting outside and started to have some surface rust so i just went over this with some 80 grit sandpaper and uh, painted it this red in this i bought it and painted it the same day just to make it not get any worse surface rust because you can see that it's a pretty rough surface because of the surface rust. So yeah, it needs some work, but it's a, what do you call it? A 10 footer. So, but when you look up close, it's pretty bad, but it's really, really rust free. This is a, it is from Finland. So it has been imported here to Sweden. So you have to do a registration here in Sweden to make it, to get plates and be able to drive it. But my plan right now is since I have bought that one, I'm gonna try and sell this, unfortunately. The economy here in Sweden is crap right now. It's basically impossible to sell used cars. I have talked to everybody in the business and uh, new cars, used cars, used new, new used cars like from the 2020s and 2015 and stuff like that. Nothing is sellable right now. So I mean, the economy is shit here in Sweden right now. So I have put this up for sale for 2,500. And uh, I have had it listed for twenty one uh, for for two thousand before and didn't sell it. So I'm gonna drop this down to fifteen hundred bucks just to get rid of it. If I don't get that, I'm just gonna put it over at my dad's place and forget about it for a few years. So yeah, that's the story about this one. Hopefully, it will uh, leave soon. <sighs> if you keep on looking, we have my NASCAR project. 
as I call it. It's a 91 Caprice chassis with a um, Plymouth satellite body on it and a satellite front end. And the plan is I have Charger doors, Charger rear quarters, Charger taillight panel. So I'm going to convert this to a two door with the Charger stuff, keep the satellite front end, lower the roof, making it a probably a two door post, but I want to keep the I want to be able to use a two door uh, front windshield. And uh, yeah, we have to do a lot of stuff to the roof to make it look good, but that's the plan anyways. But uh, yeah, when I, I'm going to sell the 64 Chevelle in my garage. And when that is gone, I have some plans that I want to work on this thing. I want to make this run and drive. I want to, I call this the NASCAR project because I wanted it to really look like a street legal stock car style build. But uh, when I, dreamt of this project i had uh, i don't think i've started to dream about this when i didn't have kids now i have an eight-year-old and a six-year-old and i really want to i can't have a car that i can't pick up my kids from daycare and from school in so it's gonna have a back seat and maybe drop the plants on having a cage and make it a little more streetable than a race car but we'll see when we get that far for now, I just want to get the body overall done so that we can start driving this thing. So that's a project that's uh, pretty far up the list. Have some engines. This 454, it's uh, freeze cracked. Where I live, I live uh, close to the ocean. So we have a lot of boats in the area. So you come across these freeze cracked boat motors sometimes. So I'm going to try and weld the cracks on this thing and just put it in something. Below there is a 305 that I bought, so I have a lot of, I have a lot of engines and uh, I have a few engines in my garage that I'm going to show you also. Besides that, I <laughs> last week I bought this terribly, terribly bad 68 Nova. I paid 900 bucks for this thing and I'm not sure what you're going to think about that. But uh, it's a complete car. Unfortunately, it was, it was I want to say it looked good when the previous owner found this thing and it obviously was pretty rusty but uh, he brought it home and uh, he they used it as a sort of blocking for stuff so they lifted it with the forklift put it down lifted up put it down and unfortunately the car just fell apart so this is here because the subframe is falling out when you're lifting it the rear axle has already fallen out of it so is really really bad. I bought this because I wanted to like make some yard art of it. Try to if I just gonna run some steel beams under it and put in the rear axle and just making it look like a car. As I said, I paid 900 bucks for it. I don't have much in it. If I really wanted, I could part it out and probably double my money. And speaking of doubling my money. <laughs> I really didn't think this was going to happen. When I say that the, the economy is bad and nothing is sellable, a viewer of mine here in Sweden reached out to me and said that he wanted to buy it. And uh, I have agreed to selling it to him for 1800 bucks. Yeah, 1800 So uh, we'll see. Uh, w what we have agreed is he's going to pick it up this Sunday for 1800 So I really don't want to sell it, but I gave him a price that I thought that, yeah, if I get that, I can sell it. So he has agreed to that. So we'll see if uh, it will be something that I will be working on. But I think it's really cool anyway. And this is that was actually the good side. This is the bad side. They ripped the door apart. There's no floor left. The truck in the rocker is still here, but it has fallen off. So yeah, it's a really, really bad car. But it's got a lot of good parts to use. The guy that is buying it is... Uh, he has a four door and he wants to use the parts from this to make a two door. So, I mean, it probably gets a good end of life use if he buys it. Besides that, I have my ramp truck here. I've showed you that before, I'm pretty sure. I really need to get working on this thing. It needs brake job all through. It, it dragged the brakes badly, so I smashed the drum here to get it to roll a little easier. But it's it's drivable, it starts real easy, but uh, we need to go through the brakes. And I have done a lot of work here on my property. I moved the tent, I moved my containers, and I have some plans on how, how I want to do this. So, 
I want to find a space for this where I can put it up on some jack stands and just let it be for a few months while I start ordering parts for the brakes because the front brakes are a little bit weird on this. So I want to find the stuff and I don't want it to be in the way when it's uh, permanently parked. So I'm going to get to this thing, but I really don't know when at the moment. And you can see here on the bed, I'm pretty sure I've talked about this also. It is a 65 Chevelle and you can see it looks a bit weird because they have moved the roof forward about, uh, what can it be? An inch, inch and, uh, no, inch, uh, foot, foot and a half, something, because they wanted to make it, I've talked about this before in a tractor as we have in Sweden. You can register cars as a tractor and uh, then 15 year olds can drive them instead of 18 year olds, but it can only go 30 kilometers per hour. They started making this in the 80s, but it didn't finish. They have changed the rules now, but at the time they had to be a pickup with a bed. And that's why I've done this. My plan with this, it was supposed to be a donor for the 64 Chevelle in the garage, but I just couldn't bear myself to scrap it. I paid 500 bucks for this and I just felt I don't want to do some fun with it. So my plan is I'm going to cut the roof off this thing, making it a convertible. I'm not going to have a convertible top or anything. I just wanted to make a summer driver. I'm going to uh, extend the doors so that they line up properly and just make it a fun convertible, put in some engine and just have fun with it. I mean, it's 500 bucks. If I scrap it, it's gone forever or I can make something fun out of it. So that's probably all the cars I have here at the moment. I have two cars at my dad's place, but nothing much to talk about right now. So uh, I'm gonna show you something here in the garage that I have in the plants also. I'm gonna work on. Also, I didn't show you, I have my K10 here. It is now uh, inspected and everything. So it's 100% street legal. I drive it every other day. And I also got my 89 K1500 that I use every other day that I don't use this thing. And uh, yeah, that's probably all the cars right now. I have a bunch of cars in the works that I wanna buy and waiting to buy. And I have a lot of projects that will be coming home sometime, but I don't know when. But uh, here's also something fun. I bought this engine from my father because uh, he didn't wanna do anything with it anymore. So, uh, I don't know what this is going to go in, but uh, we'll do something fun with it. It's a 400 small block with a lot of good parts on it. It's a 671 blower. So yeah, I'm not really sure where I'm gonna put it in right now. Maybe the NASCAR project, maybe the convertible project just because it's so silly, but yeah, we'll see. And also my dad uh, cleaned out a lot of his stuff it's really, really dusty in here. It's because I've been doing body work on this thing. I have this thing, which is also a small block. That I also bought from my dad with a small supercharger on it. So uh, this is a pretty bone stock 350 80s style with uh, this uh, supercharger on it. So it's not going to be a powerhouse. My idea right now is I'm gonna remove the 307 from the El Camino and put in this instead. But uh, I don't know, we'll see. But uh, I have a lot of fun projects and fun ideas here that I wanna do. But uh, for now, this thing really needs to go. So I'm gonna continue doing the bodywork on this thing, paint it black, do some small odds and ends, and then I'm just gonna send it on its way. My plan right now, is I'm gonna list this thing for 20,000 bucks and uh, every day I'm gonna lower it a thousand bucks until it's gone. So maybe I get 8,000, maybe I get 16,000. I don't know, but the the current, what do we wanna call, situation in Sweden, I put stuff up for sale and no one gets in, in touch with you. I don't get any offers. It's the market just stagnant, it, nothing happens. So I really wanna get rid of this thing and to feel that I get rid of it, if I put it up for sale for 20,000, I know that in 20 days, this is going to go, even if it's free. Obviously, this is never gonna go that low, 
Maybe it goes a bit lower than I want it to, but I will see. It would be a pretty fun thing. Maybe I can get some publicity off it and get some new subscribers here in Sweden. I don't know. But that's the plan anyway. This thing is going either way. Like, it, I want it gone and the money to uh, start working on some other stuff, especially the uh, NASCAR project. So that's your update right now on the situation with all my cars and the channel. And uh, as I said, I really, really want to the English channel to uh, to work out, but uh, I make 15 bucks a month on the English channel. And uh, if I put effort in, I make a thousand bucks a month on the Swedish channel. So you can see where I have the problems and uh, I really don't get the traction on English that I would prefer. But uh, if I don't post anything, I'm not going anywhere either. So. Uh, I would really love if you would write something nice in the comments and uh, if you want if you want my English videos to continue So yeah, I really 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 appreciate those of you that have written comments about You wanting me to make the English videos, so I'm really thankful for that. So anyway, thanks for watching this video and uh, maybe I'll see you again